This is Jonathan Ferguson, the Keeper of Firearms and Artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And this week, he's taking a look at some of the rather bizarre raid weapons from Destiny 2. Oh, oh, that's unpleasant. Make sure to like the video, subscribe, and let us know what other games or guns you'd like to see Jonathan break down in the comments section below. Right, over to Jonathan. It looks like a power tool, Dave. About all I can say about that one. <laughs> it's changing up design a bit, isn't it? With have, having a, a pistol grip like in the middle and a weird sort of slanted. I have to give give the designers credit for for changing the basic pl uh, plan form of a, of, a, of, a, of a gun. It cannot be easy to come up with <laughs> with new shapes for these things. It's like car design, you know. I, mean, I don't know if I can, I, th I think I can get a hint of a, a Magpul angled foregrip on the bottom of this thing. I, I might be might be seeing things. But the unfortunate thing is the color scheme and that great big chunky pack on the bottom of the pistol grip makes me think of a very elaborate power drill. See, to, to me, it's a combination between a power drill and the ZF1 from Fifth Element. It's like a, Thank you. If the ZF1 had a had a like a PDW or an SMG version, like a smaller carbine version, it's the ZF1. I knew there was a, a sci-fi gun I, I I could not bring to the, the forefront of my mind that had that was split in half with a pistol grip in the middle, and it's that. Of course, it's that. Yeah, maybe that's a deliberate callback. I'm not sure. Let's see if there's any relevance to that at all. I like the shininess. That's very cool. The texture and the shine. That adds some sci-fi-ness to it. And some glowy lights, of course, because it's the future. That's just, just a nice bit of art, that, I have, to, I have to say. The bad guy is called the Vex of the shiny robots, and this is like a Vex weapon, so it's sort of aesthetically tied to the uh, shiny red-eyed robots that you're fighting. Well, this is indeed shiny and has red glowy bits. So I see the, I think I see the design language that they're going for. This is very cool. This has a real Cold War vibe to it with a bit of wood, a bit of polymer with some checkering. Some metal, of course, as well. Magazine in pistol grip, weird butt stock. Not really anything like this, but this is this looks enough like a real gun that I'm trying to match it to real guns, which is always a good sign, I think, for something that's a that feels real. So if a sort of slug thrower type science fiction weapon should still at least feel like a real gun, even if it might not function in, in detail like one. And then I'm seeing this wolf housing. I think it looks like we've got it's like a hand stop but it's it's fangs and then a, what looks like a wolf's sort of mane and ears and eyes and upper jaw and that's that's what I what it seems to hint even that that selector switch or safety I think it's probably a, probably a selector safety looks like a lift from the FNFAL rifle slightly modified switch around perhaps but it's the shape of that selector I think they're looking here at real guns and taking design cues from them they're not they're not slavishly carrying anything over but based on or inspired by something and for me the best fictional firearms are based on something or inspired by something the uh, the wolf motif comes from its perk or i suppose its perk comes from the from the aesthetics oh right it has a, a perk called a ravenous beast right i think you can do more damage the more damage you deal or the more damage you receive so you can see like the the wolf's oh, yeah. mane and eyes getting getting red and angry so oh, cool Interesting aesthetic, struck by the lack of trigger guard. Never, nearly never a good idea. It does have a little vestigial one there, just to stop, in theory, your own hand as you grab the pistol grip from just setting off the, the trigger. Uh, a lot of gold and white. I remember, I think I remember this from other Destiny guns, but the butt plate is a really weird shape that would be very uncomfortable. It has a very inline design, which would normally, partly to accommodate recoil systems, but mainly to direct the recoil directly back into the shoulder rather than, you know, like a dropped buttstock. So that's why you would have, as they have here, a raised up sight platform 
otherwise the site's too low down for you to get onto. So even when you're designing something that's completely fictional and needn't look like a real gun at all, there are still design considerations that come from the real world. It has to have a grip, it has to have a trigger, it has to have some sort of stabilizing system if it's a powerful weapon. Um, your sight mounting system has to be at a certain height for even for your in-game character to be able to use it so that you'd intuitively know that you designed the gun incorrectly if the sight appeared too low and you were having to fudge the the height of things it has to have a barrel main thing about a gun the thing that makes it a gun is that it has a barrel uh, well some very clean lines on this one actually lots of detail that would be really just aesthetic Ah. <laughs> ah, of course it's fading. Ah, and a glowing cowboy hat. Interesting. Thank you for what I can only imagine was a was a bit of a tribute there. That's appreciated. Something I always try and do, test out how persistent the, the sort of decals are for hit marks on walls and things and see if I can write. You know, smiley face, that's the go-to. Try and do the smiley face. But um, as here, although graphics now can accommodate a hell of a lot of uh, impact marks, you do too many and the first ones start to disappear to try and keep things manageable. I am completely unclear on how this is supposed to work. The magazine has no feed lips. It doesn't appear to take cartridges. There seems to be like a ghost living in the gun. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but I do like the design of this. The weird thing is it definitely, so I, I can see, I just happen to pause where I can see these, the cartridge cases. So it absolutely is feeding cartridges from that magazine somehow. And they're a really weird convoluted shape, tapered at the front. Well, I guess that's meant to be the, the shoulder, almost like a rebated rim or something. Clearly this is an aesthetic choice, but we could try to postulate some super high pressure round or something i don't know but it's not clear how this is supposed to function i don't think that's been sort of thought of there is a cocking handle so they're, they're being fed in somehow pretty wild design here i remember some bone based weapons from the first one or two that we've never done of these. Uh, almost looks like it's just carved out of some organic material. Or, or, well, more likely it'll be some alien thing, won't it? I guess the optic is meant to be some sort of vertebrae thing as well. Don't know. And then what looks like a tongue made out of bone. Tongues are not typically made of bone, as I'm sure you have figured out from owning one yourselves. And then the sort of wires and um, a conventional looking magazine sticking out of a very non-conventional magazine housing there and just like spitting sparks out of these devices on the side. It's, it's pretty out there. Our unfortunate player seems to have killed himself there. Still not quite entirely sure what's going on, but it's really quite unusual justifies being weird if that makes sense to, to you in terms of it's functioning in a really really unusual way those those sort of streams of particles are being brought together almost like crossing the streams in ghostbusters and it's creating uh, which i always enjoy in a, in a science fiction game like beam weapons are handheld beam weapons are good fun but then there's a sort of explosive secondary effect going on which took our friend out here so Mm, not quite sure on that one, but uh, the science fiction guns that annoy me are the ones that could just be a, a plastic shell around an AK or something. But if it's far future, I don't want to see ordinary brass ejecting assault rifles that really ought to be, like, could be literally a, call, a modern Call of Duty gun. So going out there and, and weird, both in the aesthetic and in the function of the thing, seems, seems to me to be the perfect sort of thing for what this game is trying to be. I'm, I'm being told it's a shotgun. I can see the pump grip. I can see the lack of a separate magazine. Fits the bill, but it's very spacey. It's exoskeleton is nonetheless very cool to look at. I don't know what it's for. Maybe it's some sort of cooling system because it's sort of, the way it doubles back on itself around the stock is reminiscent of a, a cooling or heating, depending on what you're doing with it, element. 
but then the bar at the front is sort of riveted in place visually very interesting uh, to, to sort of look at and try to figure out what stuff does uh, let's stop doing that and watch it Hooray! Pause there and a hooray for a holographic site that doesn't require any kind of housing or anything like that. It's probably years ago now that I first started rabbiting on about how I want science fiction games to have no sights and they project, they either beam the aiming information into your brain, project it in front of your eyes, or it's literally projected above the gun. Why would you need a housing for a site in the far future? So that's very cool. It's a bit weirdly distracting and glowy when it's when you're not in the site, but that makes it look cool when it isn't in when you're not in the site. Very conventional looking ammunition. I was just thinking the same. Yeah, yeah. It's funny how no matter how how far into the future, how far away we get from Earth, red plastic hold low brass ammunition is still <laughs> all high brass is still the standard. Yeah, I, I think it's just, it's a recognition. This is so out there as a, as a gun design that, that they just keep the ammunition. Oh. Oh. Pause there, that's a little, that's a little disturbing in a weird sort of way. A very clean, futuristic aesthetic. Almost a P90-esque grip under there. It looks a bit uncomfortable and then a, a weird folding foregrip. It's a rocket, it's got a shoulder support as well. So yeah, okay, so far so good. Rocket launcher, future rocket launcher. The weird computer AI eyeballs watching all over the place, coupled with the slightly ominous name. I wonder what the idea behind this is. <laughs> now, this is an odd feature. So if we look between the slightly weird robot eyes, we see the barrel slash launch tube of the rocket launcher and it's rifled rocket launchers by definition do not use or need rifled barrels rockets are spin stabilized by exhaust rocket exhaust and fins at a certain angle that spin them in the air to stabilize them someone's confused rocket launchers with artillery in this case so apparently the rockets have tracking capability which i'm guessing that's what the eyes are doing there tracking things uh, for you i see i i see sorry that wasn't meant to be a joke and if oh it, jonathan wasn't meant to be a, it just became one when i realized that I, pun not intended as they say <laughs> oh oh that's unpleasant <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on there. Quite a conventional looking machine pistol, I think. No, uh, just just a pistol actually. Back end, some some unusual sculptural qualities to it, but um, otherwise I can recognise it as a, as a gun with probably a slide or a bolt. And then really weird, almost octopus-like, pointy, shiny, roundy bits. I hadn't seen this gun before, but the first thing I thought of is if. Cthulhu wanted a pistol. <laughs> this is what he'd make. Good call. Yeah, I picked up on the tentacles, but I hadn't made, made the full connection. Well, appropriately enough, I think it's making me lose my sanity. So, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> Someone shoved a 9mm up a squid, and this is what you got. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think we might have to cut that one. <laughs> <laughs> I like the iridescence of it, though. Yeah, I must admit, the, the sort of surface effects that go on in various ways are, are quite cool. There's a sort of geological <laughs> aspect to some of the weapons in this game, where they look like some sort of volcanic rock or something. I will I will say on that one, we've got a reciprocating something on the back with what appears to be a hammer and even has the grooves um, that you would normally use to gain the purchase to cock the hammer back, but they don't do anything and, the, and it's just moving like it's a, like it's a bolt. So we have, I think we have cosmetic hammer syndrome there. What on earth is going on here? 
<laughs> we've got fire sprouting out of one breach of what's otherwise a sawed off shotgun kind of thing or like a howdah pistol shotgun thing and then blue crystals sprouting out of the other side so i think it's a play on stuff we've seen before where you can have like box shot and slug on each barrel but in this uh, in this instance for a destiny gun it's two different elements in each barrel oh is it fire and water fire and ice darkness and light or something i think they're meant to be ice crystals so from what i've been told the symbology is like the symbol of one element is a triangle and the symbol of another is a circle so also the spread is stuck in those symbols as well that's so strange yeah i just saw that on the on the floor there so again despite bizarre design and in theory function with this as well because it's really really weird and not conventional ammo it still produces shot patterns with round holes like their bullets and it does does it in those shapes that's so so strange so I, I don't know how that would happen so i say no way i mean uh, you could probably engineer a shotgun choke slash duckbill device that would constrain the edges of a shot pattern into a triangle yeah you, you could do it but not in the way that it's shown here and to what end you, you might ask There's that sort of iridescence again. Got a cool graphical effect, but um, again, it looks like sort of a SpongeBob SquarePants grenade launcher. No, it's not, no, it's not quite sort of underwater. It's something something else. Yeah, thirty-eight. Cosmic minutes. horror milkor. Cosmic horror milkor. You see, you're you're better at this than me. <laughs> I suppose it makes sense, doesn't it? The deep space monstrous stuff. Well, even even the sound effect of this one sounds like wet and like unpleasant yeah it's like you just kicked a bucket of calamari down the stairs <laughs> you, you really are knocking it out of the park today <laughs> <laughs> don't try that at home kids that looks like the singularity generator drive from event horizon one of my favorite horror films and i suspect that's deliberate because it looks like it has a black hole in it or something similar um, otherwise though not related to that movie and covered in stitched tattered fabric lovingly modeled and textured but weird like guns don't need clothes and of course, a big spiky bayonet on the front. So potentially tying into that Event Horizon horror thing, if you don't reload when there's nothing left, it'll start pulling life out of the user. So a little of the uh, a nod to the potential horror element of something like this. That's very strange. Now that is interesting. So I think the, the previous black holey gun that we looked at in this just shot energy and did damage, I think. This actually seems to shoot miniature black holes that vanish the enemies into them, if I'm interpreting that correctly. Which is, a, this is what you want to do with a, an out there game like this, make the guns do really weird stuff. This looks like somebody made a gun out of chewing gum, old chewing gum. Remember the old, the old pink hubba bubba stuff, Dave. You remember that? I'm sure they still sell that. In big like reams. Yep. Lost its flavour after two seconds. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I, I don't, I don't fancy shooting or trying to chew this, to be honest with you. Uh, and a load of other white stuff that, uh, I don't know, look, it looks like it's sort of sustained damage. That's something we don't see with guns in, in video games, is they don't get damaged when they get shot. I don't think I've ever seen that done. So any damage or wear is there from the beginning and is there at the end. That, that, that would be a new thing, at least to me, if someone did that. However, I don't think they've done it here. This is just a skin for a gun. What looked like a drum magazine is actually a, a belt box of sorts, and there's a weird purpley, gooey looking machine gun belts and some very strange, what must be caseless rounds of ammunition that are very pointy and shard-like. This is a very alien weapon. And um, what I took to be rounds appear to be 
weird outer casings for brass cartridge cases. They've got a weird wasted rear portion, but otherwise they're pretty conventional looking, recognizable cartridge cases. And they seem to fit inside these weird pointy, almost like cathedral spire looking cases, casings that are then hinged together to create the belt. Really weird, very unclear how it would how it would function. Maybe a Maxim style system of pulling them backwards out and then into a chamber. Clearly no one's thought about that. Why should they? Yeah, I don't know why they're not kicking out something more exotic than they are. Okay, guys, those were some more guns from the Destiny franchise, specifically Destiny 2. Not not a game that I'm that I'm playing. Uh, or have really played much at all, but um, always delivers with the weird and wacky futuristic guns that blow my tiny mind. So I hope you enjoyed watching my my thought processes there and, and hearing them too. As I always like to mention, we do have our own Royal Armouries channel that you can go and check out as well as social media, bricks and mortar museums as well. So if you can do that, we appreciate it. But either way, we'll see you again here on GameSpot next week.